Hello, today I want to give you a special technique that you're going to utilize to be able to memorize things. Now this is based on the Roman room that we studied before. Now if you haven't done that, please go to my video for Roman room and learn the Roman room. It takes just a few minutes and a couple of days to actually get it actualized so you can start to use it. What I want you to do is utilize the features of the Roman room as you watch TV or watch movies, listen to someone speak as a part of your conversation. Now what I want you to do is go make sure you know the 20 parts of the room. If it's bigger than 20 it's okay but 20 should be sufficient. What you do is as the person is talking they're starting to give subjects. So what you want to do you want to take the subject and personify it to one key word or key image. Okay, so let's say for example you're talking to somebody and they said that they're going to school and they're studying to be a doctor. So what you have, you have a picture of either a school or a doctor and you can use one or the other. Let's do both, okay? Let's say you have a school and it's a building and out of the school are doctors and they're, they're people, they're little people but they're doctors, they're doctoral students and they're dressed in little white um, coats and they got stethoscopes and they've got maybe um, let, let's say uh, tongue depressors, whatever you can think of and they're running around the school chasing each other with these implements and they're doctors. Okay, So you have a picture of a school and a doctor and that's going to be your first image. Now you know by the context of your conversation what that means but that is a good lock for your memory to latch on to and bring back more of the information. So you have the first image of the schoolhouse with all of these loud children running around dressed as doctors. And now the person is tell, telling you about that um, that they come from Colorado. Okay, So you think about um, when I think about the, uh, Colorado, I think about the Rocky Mountains and John Denver. Okay, so I see John Denver on the on this giant mountain, and he's he's playing the guitar. He's, he's singing uh, Rocky Mountain High. Okay, so I just see that, and so I put that on my second part of my house, and I see the image. Okay, of John Denver singing Rocky Mountain High on the mountain, and that's what he's talking about: Colorado Rocky Mountains. Okay, so. Next thing the guy's talking about is the fact that he's married, okay, and he's got two children. So now what I see is a, a bride, and she's holding, instead of she's holding flowers, she's holding two babies. Okay, that's what I have in my, in my mind, a bride holding two babies. And so if I go over my pictures very quickly, I see the school with, the, with the little doctors, I see John Denver, on the mountain and I see the bride and she's holding two babies. Now to add some animation to it I'm going to have her juggling the two babies and she's dressed in a wedding gown. She's juggling these two babies. Okay, maybe even one hand because it's easy to juggle one hand. Okay, and the babies are screaming and making noise but this is all in your mind. It's quickly done and you move on. Okay, now the next thing the guy says that he's, he's got a dog and he says he's got a, um, a St. Bernard and the dog's name is uh, Russell. Okay, so now what I see is I see him wrestling, Russell, the wrestle with a giant St. Bernard. And he might have, like, the dog might have him in a full Nelson, or vice versa, or a headlock, or some kind of wrestling move. And so I see that. Now, this is something that you do very quickly. You don't have to stop, you don't have to even pause the conversation you simply work on your imagery as you're giving words you say okay that's going to be the key word now sometimes some of your key words might dissipate and it's okay because what happens is as you go through the flow of the conversation you start to be able to bring back to mind what was being said to you but that's what you do now you don't want to take on too many images because you're going to be talking for a certain amount of time one of the best ways to remember a conversation in this way is to ask specific questions. 
have this uh, pretty much a way of how you conduct all conversations. You ask pretty much the same kind of questions like what kind of work do you do, where are you from, talk about the family, ask about pets, ask about hobbies. By doing that, you'll start to see there's a, there's a sense of a, of a flow and a, and a natural conclusion as to, to start to the finish of a conversation by your guiding it in that way. And so after you get about four or five images, what you want to do, you want to combine all those pictures together and you call that the whoever the name, let's just say his name is Bob, the Bob story. So in Bob's story, he's got the school, you've got the mountain, you've got the bride, and you've got the dog, okay? And that's going to be something that you're going to say is linked to that person. And so, now, it's important to also write things down. Now, what I recommend is you keep a little journal, a, a small book, and you write down people's names that you meet, a little factoids, a little description of that person, and, and little things that they that they spoke about, your, your little pegs, your keynotes. And then you hold that you hold this in your in your book. Now because you've you experienced it and you pegged it and you remembered it and you wrote it down and you wrote it. That's the mo most important thing. You wrote it. You, you didn't type it, but you wrote it. So you you see yourself using your hand and you feel the sensation of your hand and you hear the sound of of the writing. It's amazing how much of your senses come to play whenever you use your memory. If I say something, if I do something, if I write something, if I see something, I'm using more of my senses. Okay? So utilize that technique and you're going to find that, I mean, what you're going to be able to do is take more of what you're experiencing and hold it into memory so you can utilize it for your life. Now, you can do this with books, you can do this with class assignments let's say you're talking to or you're listening to a teacher in a class and they're giving a, a lecture you can again you can take notes but I guarantee you if you take your average notes where you put down uh, long descriptions and big words and ideas you're not going to be able to be able to assimilate what's being said as you're writing it down so what happens is you have to go back and review your notes and if you lose your notes then all of your learning is gone because it was all basically placed on paper what you want to do is put down key words and have thoughts going through your head and these key words will expound as you continue to review them so therefore if you do lose your notes your notes are primarily in your head and you won't lose that that's why it's very important. And also, what I feel is important is what you should do is when you're listening to a lecture, a speech, or something that's important, you need to focus on it, get your keywords, peg those keywords, use your techniques I've shown you, and then at the end, you sit down and write out what you remember based on your pegging and your linking and your mnemonics. Because that way, you're going to write down what you learned, not necessarily what you were taught, because it's more important that you learn something, not just regurgitate what was being said to you. Okay? So, this is something that I think is very important to do, and I hope that you can do this, because if you do have success with this technique, you'll see that not only do you pass tests, but you acquire knowledge, and that's more important. So thank you for watching, and until next time, you have a great day.